G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza and in this video we're going to be talking about copyright and intellectual property in application specifically to artists and graphic designers, animators and things of the creative spectrum. Now before I begin I want to just put out a disclaimer that I am not a lawyer, I haven't got a law degree, this is just a very surface level approach to copyright and intellectual property from an artist and an animator but I've also had some limited experience in producing group works and collaborations and have had some discussions with lawyers from time to time to get advice on how things are to be structured and also done a bit of research specifically for this video to try and make it as simple and approachable to the new artist as possible. So we'll begin with a couple of definitions. Copyright refers specifically to something that actually has been created and the right to reproduce or perform or print or share or monetize that piece of tangible something. So in application to myself and most people watching this video, that can apply to your artwork, your music, your games, your animations and so on. Intellectual property refers to the intangible, so things like stories, characters and concepts. It's intellectual, so it's in your mind and property, it's stuff that belongs to you. So let's start off by talking about intellectual property. This is before you've made anything or before something is a tangible product. From time to time, we get an idea. This idea could eventuate to become nothing. The idea could also eventuate into big money, big results and big audiences. And wherever there is big money, big results and big audiences, there are people wanting a bigger piece of the pie. So if you've got the idea that you think is gonna be the next big thing, it's best to be wise just to avoid being thrown under the bus or burned later down the line. Now the simplest, most straightforward way things can eventuate is if the idea is your own and you produce the result on your own, therefore from concept to finish, everything is owned by you and it's all very clean and very simple. Sometimes, however, you might have an idea that's a little larger than you yourself can produce and that's okay. You can still own that idea and get help to produce it. You just need to know how to go about it so that you safely retain the ownership of the intellectual property and that there are clear guidelines in place for those who are working on the project, knowing what they get for helping you make your idea come to fruition and for you ensuring that you have all the security that you need to know that your idea uh, and the result of it is safe in your hands. Now, the best way to do this is to use a written contract. Now, of course, contracts get a bit complicated because then there are all these issues of loopholes. And so to make a secure contract, you want a lawyer and you want it to be drafted properly. And then of course that costs money. So if we're just kind of amateurs and we're starting something fresh and we're, we're not really in that realm of things yet, that's okay. You're still protected if there is evidence of an agreement between you and the other parties. So for example, email exchanges or or Skype conversations between you and the parties you're hiring to help produce your idea are all very valid evidence of an agreement or contract uh, put into place for the production of your concept. There's even such a thing as a verbal contract where if you have a conversation with someone and form an agreement in conversation, that actually applies as a contract. Now, of course, you want evidence of that having happened and sometimes you might need to back that up if things get messy later down the line. So recording conversations is a good way to do that. Uh, otherwise, email conversations is the safest, cleanest way to do it without any lawyers involved. And of course, having lawyers and contracts involved can make things feel like there's contention when there actually isn't. So first of all, that's something to kind of learn to get over as you become more professional. Contracts are sometimes a very necessary part of the production process, but also having a very clear evidence of conversations that you've had in the past in writing is a perfectly fine way to establish the contracts that have been decided on. The best example I can think of that I have from my own experience is when I produced the Larry series. So this was a series that was my own intellectual property. All the characters and ideas and story were my my own, but I needed help to make it happen. I needed a musician and a sound designer, sometimes a background artist. And when I produced video game content, I also needed a coder. So in those situations, I spoke with the people I wanted to collaborate with and we established a deal as to how much they wanted to get paid or what percentage of revenue that they would get. But that was what they got in exchange for their work. They didn't retain any of the intellectual property. So if I in the future wanted to do any marketing or make a Larry t-shirt, I have the right to do that, but they don't because they had a very specific role and remuneration for a very specific project that ended then. Now, when there's more than one person involved in the creation of an idea or 
the intellectual property, things get a little bit more complicated. The best way to protect the interests of the people involved in developing the intellectual property is to have a very clearly defined business structure and then also contracts help that as well. A very common and straightforward way is to establish what's called a partnership. That's where you and one or more people all claim equal ownership over the intellectual property. As a result of this, the ownership of the intellectual property and then future ownership of copyright and revenue is distributed evenly amongst all members of the partnership. There are of course other ways to establish ownership of intellectual property, whether it be through a business or a company, but that's all getting uh, very convoluted and a little bit off topic. So just to keep things simple, we'll keep the explanation to uh, that for now. So long story short, when you form an idea, whether on your own or with someone else, you want to make sure that there is evidence of its initial creation. And then any agreements that need to be made should be made in something of a way that can be looked back on or be used in future if it need be used in future. And if you have any concerns or are in any doubt, go to a lawyer. You can get some free consultations as well sometimes. So you don't have to be totally out of pocket just to get a little bit of advice. Otherwise, the most important thing to keep in mind is to have a really strong foundation so that everything else from there goes smoothly and evenly. A word of advice regarding intellectual property, it's often difficult to prove origin or ownership of intellectual property before things have been fully formed or uh, any structure properly made. So I would advise people to be quite careful with their ideas and not spread them to anyone else who might have the ability to produce the ideas into a result separate to you because that can cause some issues, obviously. Facebook case in point. So there are things called non-disclosure agreements or confidentiality agreements where you can essentially protect the conversations early on that you have with someone by making sure that the idea that you're sharing with them is first protected before it's shared. So next we're going to talk about copyright. Copyright law is there to protect things that are physically manifest in a fixed material form. An example of the difference between intellectual property or IP and copyright is The Simpsons, where the intellectual property belongs to the creators, but the copyright is granted to a television network that can then display and distribute the content. And there are different forms of copyright for different things. So with the example of The Simpsons, there would be copyright for the television broadcast. There would be a very different copyright contract for uh, the movie that they made. And then of course, merchandise is a completely separate thing as well. Lots of different forms of copyright to distribute the rights pertaining to that intellectual property of of the Simpsons. So first things first, a common question asked is how do you get copyright? Well, if you made it, copyright is automatic. You own the copyright. If you produce the content, if you made the artwork, you painted the picture, you made the song, you own the copyright. Digital copyright, however, is the most difficult thing to enforce. The internet is a big place. Your ability to govern what people do with your copyrighted content is extremely limited. So for example, anyone who knows of Beyonce's performance at the Super Bowl, producing some embarrassing photos that her publicist wanted removed from the internet, Internet, the result was the internet going crazy and making them go very viral. So often uh, your attempts at controlling the internet can backfire. Now even if your request is legitimate and someone is abusing your content, why is it so hard to control? Two things come to my mind as to why it's difficult to control. One is that it's financially unreasonable to try and quell the uh, non-commercial use of your copyright content. Because if they're not making money from it, then it's kind of pointless for you to spend money to stop them abusing it. The second reason is that even if your work is being used without your consent for commercial gain, it's usually done somewhere else on the planet and to enforce uh, legal ramifications from your end of the globe to wherever it is that it's being abused can be quite difficult unless you have the money to do it. That's why in most cases where it is done, it's done with companies that have the money to do it and are also scary so people stop mostly. So if you make content, specifically digital content, where you make something available for people and you can't govern what they do with it, the best countermeasures that you can make, in my opinion, are to produce quality content, be very clear in your communication, and to not treat your audience like a bunch of idiots by overpricing or making something difficult or convoluted, because then it will just be open to abuse. My personal experience so far has been 99% reciprocal. Every time I try very hard to make something for people to enjoy and sometimes 
sometimes uh, ask for a little bit in return. It's all been fine because in return people feel like there's a, a two-way relationship happening there. Some of the best received and even sometimes most lucrative business models are things like Valve's Steam, the game distribution program, and Netflix. Uh, they're great examples because in an environment where people are very used to pirating and taking what they can for free, while they can still do that, they prefer the option because it's more convenient and it's reasonably priced. Why would you pirate something when you can support the industry and get what you want easily? Easily and without breaking the bank. So in my opinion, if you're being fair to people and are producing something worthwhile and not being over restrictive, they're 99% of the time gonna to wanna to support that business model or your product. So that's a whole lot about copyright in an open environment like the internet, where it's very difficult to control things like copyright. But in any other situation where things aren't freely open to people on the internet, for instance, if you're doing client work for someone or if you're producing uh, your own artwork for a local gallery, if there's any exchange or agreement in regards to copyright, just like the intellectual property tips, you wanna make sure that you get it in writing. Just make sure you have evidence of any agreement that is made with any restrictions necessary to protect both parties' right and responsibilities and clarify obligations. There are other formal forms of protection which include things like patents and trademarks. Patents are sort of like intellectual property for like an invention or a device's function. And a trademark is like a protection of a logo or a visual entity. That's usually specifically applied to the visual representation of a company or a product. Both of these things need to be applied for formally so you can gain a trademark or a patent for something, but often it involves a bit of spending money and things like that. So uh, I'm not gonna go into details in that in this video, but that's more of a, a larger scale thing anyway. So when you're at the point where you need to invest in a patent or a trademark, you're probably uh, managing a larger something anyway, and you'll be able to have the money to spend on legal advice, and you won't need to look up free YouTube videos. Now, if I'm gonna put everything I've said in this video so far and then just try and spit out a few key points to keep in mind that are part of my personal philosophy, I would say don't let this stuff scare you. My personal approach is use whatever you want, copyright protected or not, in the privacy of your own home to develop your creativity and your skills. But when it comes to producing anything that you put out there, anything that you share, let alone monetize, uh, you wanna make sure you're creating original content or of course you're gaining any licenses you need to use to uh, use any other copyrighted content. The other thing to keep in mind is if you have ideas, be smart and play it safe and protect yourself, but don't hide in a shell. Include people, collaborate with people. It's great to let people know that you want to give them 20% of the revenue for this game for doing the music, or maybe go 50-50 with a coder and do the artwork for a game. It's a great way to develop your skills and develop healthy business relationships, and then also have something of an experience in creating an agreement that you both have to protect each other's rights. It can be a really positive experience in the end and it's just worth trying different things but also playing it safe and if in any doubt get advice. Sometimes it can be free, you can get free advice from lawyers from time to time and if you need to pay for a little bit of advice sometimes it can be worth a lot more than you actually pay any lawyer to give you that advice because you can save yourself a lot of pain down the line. So that's it ladies and gentlemen for our conversation today on copyright and intellectual property. I hope you enjoyed what we talked about today and got something useful out of it. Otherwise, thank you for joining me and until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel to see new content every week. Check out more of my stuff by clicking the annotations over there. If you want to support my work and get a few goodies for yourself, head over to my store for archives, ebooks, and get yourself something nice. If you're looking for a great place to collaborate, explore, or share your own content, head over to newgrounds.com. That's it for now, and until next time, see you later.